Create multiple streams of income to solve debt. Now we are talking of debt solution. To solve debt, create multiple streams of income, not multiple jobs. Now, there is a difference between multiple income and multiple jobs. Now, the worst form of earning is to be paid on salary. Oh. <laughs> the worst of all earning is 30 days make a pay or two weeks make a pay. But what are you talking about here? Uh, that's everyone over. <laughs> uh, you say that. Uh, yeah, why? Because you are exchanging your time for your income. So, you can start with that, but try your best possible not to stay there for long. Are you there? Are you there? Yeah. Try your best possible to move away from being paid salary-wise. Because if you are not there, you cannot earn. You must get to a point when, if I am not there, I still must have earnings. So when we talk of multiple income, I'm not talking of multiple jobs. I keep one job in the morning, and I do another one in the evening. But, you know, there is nothing wrong. If you are still keeping such jobs, it's still okay. But what I am trying to tell us, what I'm getting across to us, is we must start thinking differently. Mm -hmm. Now, multiple streams means I may be keeping my paid job for now, but I've cultivated investment, I've, I've created savings, and my savings, I have now translated it to investment that is bringing me income without me being there. That is multiple streams. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Now, I'm investing in stocks, I'm investing in real estate, I'm investing in real estate, I'm collecting rent. I don't need to be there, I am getting income, and I'm still working. Yes. Are you there? Yes. I am partnering with somebody who is doing the work, and, and my money is working along with him, but I don't need to be there. That is multiple streams. A lot of people think multiple streams is multiple jobs. As I work in the morning, if I don't work in the evening, I am not earning. If that is where we are, quickly save as much as possible and move from that realm to the point where you are no longer financially secured, but you are financially what? Free. 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 Oh, don't forget that. Financial security and financial freedom. Yeah. Are you there? Yes. So it is important. So create multiple income, multiple streams of income, not multiple jobs that leads to increase in revenue for you to pay down on whatever you are earning or whatever you are owing. Remember where we started out from. God wants you to pay down your debt. God wants you to move away from that realm and live into the realm of abundance. So multiple. Then number four, work hard to drop your expenses and also as you increase your income. It's hard work to drop your expenses. It's hard work. And where do you start? Start from the little, little things. You are owing. Fine. We've said it here in time past. If you are having a mortgage, if you pay additional $100 every two weeks, making $200 outside of what you have paid, you would have saved five years of your mortgage, of your mortgage payment. Five years. So where do you start? Go start from your expenses. Look at your expenses. How much do I pay for? Do I pay Telos or Shaw? There are some stations on your show and Telos that you do not watch, but you have it in your bouquet, which you are paying for. Why don't you tell them to remove it? Maybe ten dollars here, twenty dollars here. Tell them to remove it on my Telos, and uh, because I watch, I love, I watch soccer. I love soccer to watch, watch Premiership and all. So. I think on their station, they now yanked off um, premiership. So and I said, that now made me to visit. And I called and I said, well, 
I just want to watch the news station and some Christian station. I'm not interested in uh, baby, the children station, uh, Santa Claus, and all those children <laughs> stations. <laughs> you know, <laughs> children of so I said, I'm not interested. Please yank off this children station, yank off this, yank off that. And it came down to about 70. Whoa. And I was still having all the stations I needed to watch. So I was busy paying for what I was not using. So you may need to check that. Your groceries, you may need to check it. What exactly are important to buy? You have to check it. You have to check, tick, 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 tick. A little $50 here, $60 here. By the time you add up all the amount you would save, you will realize that it could go as much as 200. Now if you multiply 200 by 10 months, that's how much? That's 2,000. That's 2,000. In, in um, one year, that's 2,400. But it looks so simple. It looks small, so small. If that 2,000, if you could put that you have saved, put it in a different account and watch it grow. I mean, it's important. So we have to work on our expenses. You have to work on it. But when you are doing this, you have to sit down with your spouse, please. If your spouse is not here, don't go and say, well, if you told now, we should cut down our expenses. This has to go. That, <laughs> I'm not there. Don't call my name into it. <laughs> sit, down <with> your, <laughs> sit down with your spouse and discuss it and tick, tick, tick. What are the things that we actually don't need? We actually don't need. Possibly, you have grown-up children and you have a house that has basement. And all of a sudden, your children are all grown and they have left the house. And your basement has another exit from the outside. And what do you put in your basement? Garbage. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Used bottles. Used papers. Used this, used that. And the, the basement is just there. There are people who are looking to rent basements because it is cheaper for them. Instead of having a, an apartment. And they will be so glad to rent your basement. But your basement is just there with your treadmill that you hardly go there to even do your jogging. <laughs> you know, your treadmill is there, say, yeah, I run my basement, have my treadmill. When last did you go to, uh, to do exercise on your, your, your treadmill? Uh, it's just gathering dust. So, if you can raise possibly from your basement, you can raise possibly 800. That's a lot. That's a lot. But the basement is just there. Are you there? Yes. Your children have grown up and they have left the house. And you and your spouse alone. Maximize what you have. You can get some additional funds through that and pay, use that to pay down on your debt. It's important. Then walk down and walk to your space. Then again, ask for debt settlement. This is extremely important. That is, debt settlement is different from debt um, 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 zero debt cancellation. Debt settlement is I'm owing, but I've not been able to pay for a while. But now I have a chunk of money I want to pay. A chunk of money you want to pay. Don't just pay it in. Go to your bankers. If I pay this huge amount in, can I have some interest waivers? They will tell you it's not possible. It's not possible. Tell them, write a mail. Can I speak to your manager? My manager is not available. I want to speak with him. Then you talk to your manager. The manager says it's not possible. Can you do me a mail and send it to your head office? That is, I'm owing this amount and I want to pay this bulk amount. How do you know this? Before you go and ask for such things, calculate your principal and the interest. Be able to separate the interest from the principal. No bank or organization will want to waive away the principal. But they can still play with their, principal, with their interest. If the interest has now become huge, you can tell them, can you wave up this and I'll promise you I'll pay this, one, this chunk of money. Don't just pay that huge amount. I want to pay it down and then you're still like jogging on the spot. So, receipt for debt, um, for debt re uh, reduced, uh, for debt settlement, to reduce the payment. Or if it is, you want to ask for an outright, that okay, I want to clean off, I want to clean off this whole thing. This amount is how much I'm owing. Can you wave up this and I will pay this down? You have to negotiate with your creditors. Creditors are human beings, they are not spirit. You don't have to be afraid. And you know what I tell people? 
you have nothing to lose. Even if they tell you no, you have seen that it does not change your position. But what if we hear yes? Are you there? What if we hear yes? Many times when I go to the store, I try to ask for discount. Even though it's the prices that well, I'm going to buy it for, can I have a discount? <laughs> so, they tell me it's not, we don't have a Most of the time I get discounts. But many of us don't know. We think once the label is there, start, it has to be. Ask for discount. The worst I can hear is no, it has not changed my position. But what if I get a yes? And most of the time I get yes. <laughs> I get yes. So let's be about. Then another thing is seek professional advice. Seek professional advice. Please seek professional advice in complex situations. Seek professional advice. Speak up. Don't be quiet. A lot of people think by them being quiet, they are, it shows that they are humble. No, 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 no. You're not being humble. You're just being stupid. Don't be stupid. Open up. Go to your banker. Talk to them. This is how much I'm owing. I've defaulted, I know. I want to pay. But what can we do? Or seek a professional advice from somebody. There are a lot of professionals that are among us here. Walk up to them. At least I'm sure they will not charge you. Will will not charge you. Share will possibly will not charge you. I mean, for, for advice. But when you get into other things, you may want to. Even Zora will not. I mean, seek advice. Go meet them in the office. I'm owing this, this, this. How can I go about it? They will tell you. See professional advice of whom? Then negotiate reduced rates. This is very, very important. Negotiate reduced rates. If possible, consolidate your, in your loan in a secured debt. Now, there are two types of um, debt that may be created. There are some that are secured. That are secured. Thank you. I got it. There are some that are secured. What, when you have a debt that is secured, that is, it has a collateral back in the door, you are likely to get a reduced rate. Are you there? But if it is not secured, the rate will be high because the risk is high. For example, credit card, there is no collateral behind it. You pay as much as 18% on your credit, on your credit card and it's compounding. But if you have a line of credit or you have a mortgage or you have a car, that is, there is a security backing it up. You are likely to pay about 8% or 7%, depending, you know. So, if you know you are owing so much, and you are paying down on a collateralized loan of about 8%, and you have your credit card that is within 18% compounding, what tells you to go talk to them? Okay, can you bring all these huge debits, put it against my collateralized, because there is a space. How about not talking too technical now? But we have to understand this. You can tell them, can you bring this outstanding, consolidate it into the one that has a reduced rate? You might be will agree. It's okay, let's put it together on the one that has collateral, that has a reduced rate. For example, you have a mortgage, and possibly you took a mortgage of 500,000. And you have paid down on your mortgage to about 250000 And you have a credit card with the same bank, loan, debt of about, let's say, 30000 And it's compounding. You can approach them. Can you pre transfer this amount? Is it possible to move it to my mortgage? Let me consolidate it into this. So I'll be able to pay an interest rate of about 8% or 6%. Well, I'll be free from paying 18%. So if you don't speak up, you would not know. And a lot of people think, let me run away from my bankers. Let me wish this money will this the outstanding will go. It will not go. You will wake up in the morning, you still staring at you. <laughs> it's not, not going to go away. So you have to. You have to. You can ask for debt co consolidation. Move it to the one that has lower rates. That will give you some time to be able to pay down. Are we there? Yes. Are we there? We are talking of solutions now. Another solution for that is use your tax returns or other excess income, free funds such as inheritance, gifts to pay down on your outstanding. When you have excess fund, you get you just got in a tax refund. You got a tax refund of five thousand. Someone is about people get a tax refund of as much as ten thousand. I say, ah, oh, free money. So what's going to happen? 
<laughs> you go on a spending spray? No, 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 that's not a wise decision. <laughs> you vacation? No, that's not a wise decision. Take out of it, even if you're not using oil, to pay down on your debt. Because it's not going to go. It's not going to go. So use it to pay, pay down. You may have even a mortgage and you have excess fund. Pay down on part of your mortgage. It's going to crash it. Your mortgage has been turned off for 25 years. Must you use 25 years to pay? No. You can pay it down in 15 years. You can pay it down in 10 years. Do you think it's not possible? Come on. And some you think it's not possible? It's very much possible. Use your excess fund to pay down and set the house free. And you look at the house, this house costs 500,000, I bought it, but it's free. You are comfortable. You are free. So then another way to pay to, to solve it is sell unused items. Some people, some of us, we have cars that are just parked in our garage. Gathering dust, you've used it and you bought another one. So it's just there. Why is it there? I'm waiting for my grandchild. I want to give it to him as a gift. That grandchild is not going to take it that car. He's going to tell his mom, grandma, it's an old wretched car. I'm not going to take it. I don't need it. I need another one. Sell it off. Sell it off and pay down on your debt. Some of us may need to do some garage sales. Your basement is filled with lots and lots of items. She is laughing at me. I hope you're not guilty. <laughs> is your garage, go, go do garage sale. And then sell those things. Blenders that are not being used. Uh, your, your, your blenders, your, I mean, your, some of us, we have some, so many wonderful things. You can put it up, do a garage sale, sell them or free your apartment, and then use that amount to pay down. And then lastly, I'm going to stop there, is pray to God. Now, there's something we call debt cancellation. It does happen. When you actually talk to God, I say, Lord, I can't really, don't know how to go about it, but I want you to intervene. Something can happen, and your debt could be cancelled. Mm -hmm. Example of a woman who went for, she was diagnosed for a very, very um, critical medical stuff, and uh, she went to the hospital and she got a treatment and she got a bill of about uh, I think about 40,000 outside what is provided for. And she prayed and said, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to pay this. One day the management of the hospital, they were discussing, okay, who do we, we want to write off some debt? And they picked her out of the whole lot and they wrote her. And not only did they write her to write off her debt, everything she has paid initially, they reimbursed her. That can only be God. They reimbursed her what she has paid before. True story. So it can happen. It can happen. But I don't want you all to, I don't want to say this is the easy way out. I will just pray to God. <laughs> I don't want you to do all you have to, you know, to do and then talk to God. Lord, okay, I'm having this debt. I want you to help me. I can't pay it. Now, when you tell God I can't pay it, God can bring, make you pay in different ways. It could be written off. God can open an avenue for you to do a quick business, a one-off. A one-off business and you have so much money. It's like a windfall. And what do you do? Say, ah, this is free money that has just come. And you go spread it again. You say, no, no, I just answered your prayers. You may think it's going to be written off, but it could just open up a business to you. Somebody just calls on you and says, let's do this business. You do it and you have so much money. And then what do you use it to do? You just pay off. That was exactly what happened to me some time ago. I had, that's not in Canada here, I had an outstanding. And somebody walked in my office where we were working there. They called and said, anyone that sells this property, we're going to give him 5%. Five, five and it was a huge amount. And I looked here and there, and then God helped me. I was able to get the buyer. And it was sold. And the amount I got from the 5% was enough to clean off my mortgage that I had then. So does it happen? Yes, it happens. I've experienced it. It happens. But you know what? You must have the mentality Amen. that it is possible. Mm -hmm. If you say it is not possible, your mind shuts down. Everything shuts down. It is very possible. I'm going to round off here so that I can call chairs for us to pray. 
Now, we've heard of this solution. What are you going to do about it? That's the question. Let us pray.